Hello, my most amazing artist. Let's dive right in and go ahead with our art class catchphrase. I make messes. I make mistakes. But deep inside, I get what it takes. I am an artist. Today we're going to be making, wait for it, it's a lot of words, let me see if I can get it all straight, salt, dough, shoe, print, sea, turtles. Shoo, I got it right, I've been practicing. Let me show you. We are going to be creating salt dough clay. I'll walk you through that process. We're going to be dyeing that clay green, so you will need some food coloring, as well as the ingredients for salt dough clay, which is, get a pencil handy, a quarter cup of flour. Nope, wrong, scratch that. A half a cup of flour, quarter cup of water, quarter cup of salt. The food coloring colors you'll need are yellow and blue, unless you already have green. And then I saved some of the blue to make bubbles. You'll also need a piece of cardboard, some crayons to decorate the cardboard, and a shoe with a really cool and clean pattern on the bottom. But before we do this, let's go ahead and say thank you to our sponsors. Thank you to Dixon Ticonderoga. Normally, they provide me with all of the art supplies I need, but the supplies today, those came from the grocery store. But anytime you see me using beautiful, bright color construction paper, nice and thick paper to draw and paint on, even the markers and the pencils that I use are all provided to me by my friends at Ticonderoga, the makers of the best art supplies. So thank you for sponsoring Art Class with Cassie. And thanks to Art to Remember. It's really hard to keep artwork like a salt dough clay project forever. Sometimes the pieces fall off, but one thing that you can do is take a picture of it and upload it onto your very own free to create digital online gallery. Thanks to Art to Remember. Then you can remember your masterpieces always. Added bonus, you can also have your artwork printed on a ton of different things. So thank you, Art to Remember. Y'all make sure to check them out. Okay, we're gonna be using all of the elements of art as we always do, but our focus today is really going to be on texture. Texture is the way that something feels. We do a lot of implied texture when we draw and create, where we draw lines to show a texture, but when you touch the paper, you can't really feel it. Well, not today. Today, when we're using clay and we're pressing our shoe into the clay, you will be creating a texture with your shoe. Not one that's just implied, but one that you can actually feel. So you need to go on a little hunt Look for a pair of shoes that have a really cool but clean tread on the bottom, meaning no dirt, no twigs, no rocks or sticks in the bottom of the shoe because that will end up in your clay. Okay, let's run through those elements of art, shall we? Line, shape, color, baby, color, form, value, texture, and space. Pinkies out, friends. <clears throat> I pinky promise that today I will do my best. I will finish what I start and I will keep a positive attitude. Mwah! All right, guys, let's get started on our salt dough shoe print sea turtles. Let's go. To make our salt dough shoe print sea turtles, ooh, that's a lot to say, we're going to begin by creating the salt dough. So you'll need water, salt, and flour. You'll need a quarter cup of water, which I've already placed in my large bowl. I also have some water just kind of sitting next to me because when I start to work with the clay, sometimes it dries out and that extra little bit of water would help. So already in my bowl is one quarter or one fourth cup of water. Now I'm going to add the same amount, one quarter cup of salt. So I'm gonna grab that salt. My measuring cup is on a nice flat surface. That way I can make sure I get just the right amount and keep it nice and level. Shake this, make sure it's level, almost there. It's important to get your measurements as exact as you can and then go ahead and add your salt. Looks like a little bit of my salt decided to stay behind, so I'm gonna scoop some of that out and now I'm adding the flour. I'm adding double the amount of flour. 
So 1 fourth plus 1 fourth equals 2 fourths, and that is 1 half a cup. So I've got my salt out of here. I'm gonna add half a cup of flour, wheat flour, gluten-free flour. Those also work. I'm using all-purpose flour. We won't be baking this when we're finished just in case you're wondering because it will be attached to a piece of cardboard. Got a little too much flour. I'm gonna add some back to the bag. Shake this so it's nice and flat. Yep, still too much. There we go. Let's see how that looks. Looks good to me. I'm gonna add that. That was a little much, so I'm gonna throw some back in the bag. Okay, now that I have my three ingredients, a half a cup of flour, a quarter cup of water, a quarter cup of salt, it's time to mix it all up. Now as you're mixing, you'll notice it mixes pretty good at first and then it starts to get a little bit clumpy. And when it gets a little bit clumpy, that's when we have to dig in and really knead that dough. Now as you're mixing, it's going to look a little clumpy and dry, if it's really runny, then you might have added too much water, in which case add some salt. If it's really, really dry, try kneading it first, and then if it's still dry, we will go back and add a little bit more water. It's important to only add a little bit at a time. Okay, so I've done about as much mixing as I can do, and now I'm ready to start kneading my dough. Next, and just kind of continue mixing those ingredients together, grabbing anything that's left over in my bowl. There we go. Now that looks pretty good. Again, if yours is crumbling right now and falling apart, put it back in your bowl and add a little bit of water. It's just telling you it's thirsty. If your clay is sticking to your hands, then put it back in the bowl and add more flour. Put flour on your hands and that will keep it from sticking. Mine looks pretty good, so now I'm ready to dye my clay. Now, I have in my food coloring container, I had the primary colors, blue, red, and yellow, but mine also just came with green. If yours came with green, and you don't want to mix your own kind of green, you could just add a couple of drops of green to this and mix. Or you can create your own green, which is what I'm about to do. I'm gonna take my clay, I'm going to divide it into two equal-ish pieces just by twisting it in half. And to make green, you need the primary colors, yellow and blue, which means I don't need red today, so I'll just add that over here with my green. Got my Christmas color sitting over here. Okay, so I've got my food coloring here. I'll add a couple of drops. I'm gonna flatten this a little bit and add some drops of food coloring. Let's see if this works. I actually think this is gel food coloring. So I don't know, I've never worked with this before. Look at us experimenting. Notice how I folded it inward to try to keep some of that off my hands. And now I'll work it through the clay and it looks like a gel kind of food coloring works awesome. Not only does it dye the clay, but would you look at those hands? Now, as you're working this food coloring through the clay, if it starts to get a little sticky on your hands, you know that you can just add a little food coloring. In fact, it's important today to keep that food coloring nearby because you're going to need it so your clay does not end up sticking to the bottom of your shoe. All right, so I've worked that yellow food coloring all throughout my clay, as well as my hands, lovely. Now I'm gonna take this yellow clay and set it aside, maybe add a little bit more flour so it's not quite so sticky, and I'm gonna repeat that process with my blue. If you wanna take a moment to go wipe off or rinse off your hands, that might not be such a bad idea. I'm gonna take my chances and just go for it with my blue. Now, yellow is a light color. If too much blue is added to this, and then these two colors are combined, I'm going to end up with a dark bluish green. So for that reason, I'm only going to add a couple of drops of this because I can always go back and add more, but I can't magically take too much food coloring out. All right, I'm now, oop, there it goes, working it through the clay, getting it on my hands. And now 
now I got this really great kind of blue color mixing throughout. My hands are also adding a little bit of yellow to it, which yellow and blue make green. Now as you work this through, if you decide it's too light in color, a light color is called a tint. If it's too light, like I think mine is, try adding a little bit more food coloring. What we learned here right now is that when you take white and add it to a color like blue, you make a light color. I made light blue. When you make a color light, it is called a tint. So we just learned how to make a tint of a color or a light color by adding white. All right, I'm gonna keep mixing this throughout and once I've got my blue pretty well mixed, I'm going to combine these two. This looks like a nice light blue. I've got a nice light yellow. I think I'm ready to combine the two. Now to create green, I'm going to add these two colors together, but my food coloring made mine kind of on the sticky side. So for that reason, just gonna have a little flower here and on my hands so when I combine the two, they don't get too sticky. Now, if you want to, you might wanna save some of your blue, just maybe a pinch, in case you wanna add bubbles or even little fish swimming around with your sea turtles. So think about that. I'm gonna pinch off about the size of a gumball and I'm gonna set that aside for any little details I wanna add. Now I can combine these two colors together. You could just squish them together or I like to roll them together by making a coil and another coil and then twist. And now I can squish. This is the fun part. It's so much fun squishing and squeezing this clay. Woo, look at that. It's so beautiful too, twisted and twirled together. Now, if your clay is crumbly and falling apart, you didn't do anything wrong. Your clay is just trying to tell you that it needs a little bit more water. If your clay is like mine and it's a little bit sticky, drop it in the flour, roll that flour around, get it on your hand so that it won't stick so much to you. Now, if you wanted your sea turtles to have a really cool tie-dye kind of effect, you could stop right here. That way you can see your color swirled. Or if you want it to be more green, you could keep mixing. And I'm getting a nice bright green for my sea turtles. All right. I'm almost ready to set my green and my blue aside and go and get my cardboard and crayons. So let me go ahead and move my things out of the way because I have a nice bright green for my sea turtles and I have a blue for anything extra. Okay, next up I'm going to be decorating the background of my cardboard for where my sea turtles are just want it to look like water that's kind of rippling, giving them something to move through. So for that, I'm just going to create some spirals. So using blues, greens, purples, I'm actually using what's called the cool colors. I'm creating some spirals for the like ripples on the surface or even the, just the designs you would see when you're swimming underwater. It helps if you use a variety of colors and if you have some of those ripples kind of overlap. Notice how one hand is kind of holding the board still for me. Throw some purple spirals in there and you'll notice as you're doing this, some colors show up really well. Some colors you can't see very well. Could pr I'm pressing pretty hard with my crayon so I can get a nice dark value. Value, as you know, is an element of art. Here we go. I'm just looking for any empty spaces on my board, just doing some more overlapping with my colors. All right. Now that I have some water kind of rippling and it looks like I'm able to show even some space, another element of art, I'm ready to begin creating my sea turtles. So to do this, I've got my board. I've got my <laughs> big piece of clay that's nice and stuck to my paper, oopsie, and my little piece of clay. I'm gonna take my big piece of clay and to create my sea turtle, I'm gonna go ahead and pinch off a piece of clay that's about the size, let's see, looks like it's a good gumball size. 
Notice how it fits in the palm of my hand. I'm gonna add a little bit more, making it a little bigger because I want this to be for my large sea turtle. So if you want it to be even bigger, add a little bit more clay. And I definitely am going to add a little flour to this. If yours is cracking though, add some water. Now that I've got it into a sphere shape, I'm gonna go ahead and just smush it a little bit, shaping it almost into a oval kind of shape but with like a pinched bottom. I take that back, it's more like a circle with a little pinched bottom. I'm imagining what a sea turtle's shell looks like. It's round like a circle on one side. It's got a little bit of a angle lines that go in right here on the sides. And so to create that, I just pinched it, but I did not smash the clay. I'm gonna go ahead and peel it off my hands. And now I'm gonna set it, I think right there on my board seems like a good place. But my clay, as you saw, it's very sticky. If I press my shoe into there, it's going to stick to my shoe. So what I'm going to do is get a little bit of flour Put it both on my hands. So I'm gonna put it on my hands like this. I think I'll do it off my board so it doesn't get too much on my board. And just kind of tap it onto my clay a little bit. There we go, I'm just brushing it or dusting it onto my clay. And now I have my shoe, so I'm looking for an interesting place on my shoe. I really like this place. Notice I don't have, they're a little dirty, not gonna lie, but I don't have rocks or dirt and anything in there. I'm just gonna tap some of that flour from my hand onto my shoe. That flour is going to keep it from sticking. Now I'm gonna press my shoe into my clay, just kind of wiggling it back and forth, and then pull it straight up. Now look, I had just the right amount of flour and have this really cool texture for my shell. I lost that shape a little bit, that's okay. I actually think I like this round shape and that would make it easier for me to make my next one. Okay, now let's make the parts of the sea turtle's body. So a sea turtle has two flippers in the front that are really big that help it swim and guide it and two smaller ones in the back. Let's start with that one in the front. I'm taking a piece of clay about this big like a big peanut M&M and I'll roll it into a thick coil. I'm gonna take this thick coil and bend it a little bit and then as I smoosh it, I'm spreading it out to make it into that nice big flipper. This is the big one in the front. Awesome, okay, so I've got one finished. Notice it's just gonna stick itself to the board. If it's very dry in your hands, you already know what to do. It's telling you it needs water. If it's very sticky, add flour. All right, I'm gonna roll the same thing, a thick coil that's bent. This one, he's gonna be swimming. So to show movement, which is a principle of art, I'm gonna have this one come up a little bit. Right, they're swimming in the water. So think about how you can show that movement. This one's coming up. This one's going back down a little bit. Awesome. Now I'm making two smaller versions of these in the back. So this time I use less clay, roll a little sphere, roll a smaller thick coil, bend and squish. You could also do turtles this way. You could do sea turtles but a turtle doesn't have these big flippers. So looking online at some pictures of turtles will give you some interesting ideas. Also, check out videos of these turtles swimming through the water. It'll really inspire you or give you more ideas for yours. Notice I'm just repeating the process. That thing got really skinny. Let's see if I can make it about the same size by pushing it into a slab. Okay, now, I'm gonna add a tiny little piece of clay to the back for the tail. Boop, cute. If it's sticking to you, try adding some more flour and now let's add the head. So I'm gonna get a piece of clay that's about as big as the piece that I used for the flipper. Roll it into a sphere. I think I'll add a little bit more. Roll it into a sphere. And now I'm squishing it like this, so a slab. Once I have it squished, I'm gonna pinch the bottom a little bit for a neck, almost like a teardrop shape. Let's see how this looks by adding it. Awesome, looks great. 
And now I've got my sea turtle complete. Now sea turtle has eyes on the side of their head. So I just gently pressed in my clay. If you want to, you could take a couple of different pieces of colors of clay and add a little eye there. Whoop, it fell right off and a little one right there. With a pencil, you could poke two little nostrils, but you know what? I'm happy with the way the sea turtle looks. I've got all this extra clay and my blue. Now I can work on adding more sea turtles, maybe some bubbles and some fish. Now that you know how to make a sea turtle, you can make as many as you like. You might even want to consider making some in a variety of sizes. If you get a little bit of flour on your board, your sea turtle might not stick to your cardboard. All I did to keep it from sticking, or to make sure that it does stick, was I just dampened the board with a little bit of a damp cloth and using my pencil to add some designs to the feet. Have so much fun, guys. Enjoy making your salt bow, shoe print sea turtles. See you soon.